Christian enjoys traveling with his wife, Allison, and their corgi, Benny. Some of their favorite trips have included, I think I got this right, Mackinac Island, Telluride, Durango, Ore, Silverton, Leadville, Marble, Peanoa, Crested Butte, Kukara, the Black Hills, Breckenridge, Aspen, Santa Fe, Steamboat, and Salida. I'm sure I misspelled or mispronounced some of those words. Sorry about that, Christian. This speech is about one of their trips to Chicago in 2014. Christian and Allison met at Ball State in Munchie, Indiana. Christian accepted a job in Colorado Springs after graduating, and he was sure he wanted to bring Allison with him. To convince her to come with him, though, he first needed to take care of a few things. Please welcome Christian as he presents his in-season proposal. Thank you, Greg. Okay. In Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, the king of fairy tasked the mischievous sprite Puck with finding love in idleness. Love in idleness is a real flower, a pansy, and was mythically considered to have magical properties. The juice in the flower is thought to cause love at first sight. While completing the assignment for Oberon, Puck greets a fairy he happens upon in the wood by saying, how now spirit, whither wander you? Fairy's reply is rather florid. Over hill, over dale, through bush, through briar, ouch. Over park, over pale, through blood, through fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere. And I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. The cowslip tall, her pinches be in their gold coats. Spots, you see, those be rubies, fairies' favors. In those freckles live their savers. I must go seek dewdrops here and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. So a cowslip, or primula veris, is an herbaceous perennial flowering plant in the primrose family. The species is native throughout most of temperate Europe and Western Asia. The species name, Varus, is Latin for of spring, even though it is known to flower anywhere from December to May in the British Isles. It is also known as the key to heaven, or is sometimes called fairy cups. If you couldn't tell from my background or the fairy's description, the flower is a golden yellow with red spots on each petal. In January of 2014, I sent my girlfriend one of her favorite things, a postcard. You see, she loved to travel to her favorite places and send back postcards to her loved ones. I have some she sent from Germany and Spain. One place we would like to travel is Golconda Mine near Lake City, Colorado, but I don't think they sell postcards there. The postcard I sent her featured a picture of cowslips, no doubt gracing her mailbox at the same time real cowslips were popping up across the pond. The postcard had the fairy's lines from The Midsummer Night's Dream inscribed on it. Although she enjoyed the poem, she was somewhat confused by the verses outside of the context of the play. She did not realize yet it was just a teaser of something more fantastic to come. You see, she had hinted that when someone, me, proposed to her, she did not want a traditional diamond ring. She wanted a ruby set in gold. Thinking back, I'm glad the poem did not blow my cover 
or at least she says it did it. Two months later, on March 15, 2014, we found ourselves in downtown Chicago. We had woken up early to see a live rendition of A Midsummer Night's Dream at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater on Navy Pier. It was cold, with snow still piled on the pavement, and Lake Michigan still solid with fragmented blocks of ice. She wanted to take it easy that day and started putting on sweatpants and a sweatshirt for the show. I begged her to dress up a little bit more as we were going to the Chicago Shakespeare Theater after all. She obliged me much to my relief and we were both we both wore green to be festive for the holiday. The show was lively and interactive and I was a sweating pile of nerves as the play began with a wedding and until it ended with all the misplaced love interests getting resolved. Sitting there listening to the old English, the lump in my throat was almost as big as the one in my coat pocket. When the play ended, we exited the theater under the guise of watching the city turn the Chicago River green for St. Patrick's Day. But first we needed to walk to the end of the pier since we were already there anyways. We walked through the arboretum filled with wonderful plants and flowers and past the carnival Ferris wheel all the way to the end against the ramparts, gazing into the vast expensive, expansive lake over the chain railing made it too easy to ruminate on what the future would hold. Finally, I got a grip. I took her hand. She looked at me curiously as I bent down on one knee. I drew the lump from my coat pocket, but the one in my throat only grew bigger. I managed to pop open the case and sputter out those cliche words. Will you marry me? She let out a shriek of surprise and immediately her eyes began to well up. She was able to say yes before breaking down and embracing me. I again took her hand and equipped her with a gold engagement ring set with a ruby. I had designed the ring with a jeweler who had used diamonds for my grandmother's wedding ring as the dewdrops surrounding the red spots on the cowslip. Speaking of dewdrops, the happy tears she shed also resembled diamonds next to her ruby lips, gold coat, and green dress. She was my key to heaven, my Golconda. We stood there in shock for what felt like a dream lasting years, but Looking back, it was likely better measured in seconds. Meanwhile, a certain clicking sound had gradually gotten closer, and upon further inspection, she realized my photographers had captured the entire moment. She shrieked again and <laughs> cutely waved and exclaimed hi to them. We made our way to the unnaturally green Chicago River and spent the rest of the day floating in our fairy cups boat, dreaming about how our lives had just changed. We didn't need the love and idleness flower. Instead, the common club cowslip was the audience to our performance of love.